Good morning, everybody. Uh, I apologize for the delays. What we're trying to do is not only capture the lecture, the PowerPoint, but also our speech and the translation so that if somebody wants to watch a video of this lecture, they can do so. ពេលនេះមានកំហុសបច្ចេកទេសនិទិតទាំងរឿងការប្រើប្រាស់ស្លាយដែលយើងថតវីដេអូនេះគឺការធ្វើគឺយើងចង់ធ្វើឲ្យ
As I mentioned before, you cannot practice advanced airway management unless you master basic airway management. So let's talk about the indications or the reasons you would provide an advanced airway. There are three main indications for an advanced airway. The first is if the patient is unable to maintain or protect their airway. And when I say maintain, that means maintain it open. The second reason to place an advanced airway is if the patient is not adequately oxygenated, so their pulse oximetry reading is low, or if they're not adequately ventilating, if they're not taking big enough excursions to move oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. And the third reason is you might perform advanced airway management or intubate somebody if you were concerned that they might lose their airway. And I'll give you two examples. One would be a patient who inhales hot air or steam that's, involved, that's in a house that has a fire and they're inhaling very hot air. That hot air can cause damage to the airway and that slowly over time or actually quickly that airway can swell and close off. So if they have such an injury, you might intubate them early before the swelling closes off their airway. Another scenario is the patient who has a stab wound or penetrating injury to their neck. They can develop swelling from blood in their neck and slowly over time that swelling can start to distort or close their airway. So before that happens, we might intubate the patient before they have distortion or lose their airway. So endotracheal intubation, endo within trachea, your trachea. So endotracheal means passing an endotracheal tube, which we're all going to do today. This is an endotracheal tube, passing that endotracheal tube into the trachea. The tube passes through the vocal cords, and once it's past the vocal cords, on the tube is something called a cuff, which can be inflated, and that can prevent, when it, with an inflated cuff within the trachea, we can prevent aspiration. Another 
Chlong Karu Hai Jung Nung Plum Shal Ryung Nung Bang Shal Nung Chow Dam Bay Ovi Paung Lang Hai Ka Paung Lang Nai Chong Tu Yoni Vien Nung Ai Ka Ka Pia Ka Bird Srop Tuk Pia Chow Thong Suot Dai this is a what we say definitive means of achieving airway com complete control of the airway. That means we're in charge of the patient's airway once we put the tube in the correct position. And when we say oro tracheal intubation, oro meaning mouth means that the tube first passes through the mouth, then into the pharynx, then into the larynx, then between the vocal cords and into the trachea. <laughs> So let's talk about the advantages, the, the reasons why this is a good thing for the patient. Again, one, th one of the reasons is it can provide an open airway for the patient. When the endotracheal tube is in the trachea, you can pass air or medications through the middle of the tube into the patient's lungs. Again, when the tube is in the trachea and the cuff is inflated, it can prevent food particles or secretions from entering the trachea and getting into the lungs. This procedure can be performed in patients who are breathing or patients who are not breathing. And because you're looking at the vocal cords with your own eyes, you can see the tube passing through the vocal cords and into the trachea. What are the disadvantages of this procedure? The disadvantages are that you need specialized equipment, which we're going to show you today, and you need specialized training. What are the complications or things that can go wrong if you're performing endotracheal intubation? It's possible that the tube may not enter the trachea but may enter the esophagus instead. And this is obviously not good for the patients. Also during the procedure, you, the patient may vomit and aspirate what's in their stomach. During the act of intubating, sometimes patients can develop bradycardia, laryngospasm, bronchospasm, and sometimes they can stop breathing. Mean Larangospa, mean prongospa, 
If you're not careful, you can damage the patient's mouth or teeth or tongue and cause bleeding. And as I mentioned yesterday, if the patient is a trauma victim and has an injury to their spinal column, the act of intimating may make that injury worse. Okay, there are six basic steps to performing endotracheal intubation. And again, we will go over these again today in our workshop. The first step is preparation. The second step is pre-oxygenation. The third step is positioning the patient in the correct position to do endotracheal intubation. Step number four is the actual placement of the endotracheal tube. It is putting the tube in the correct position. Number five is looking for proof or evidence that the tube is in the right place, that it's within the trachea and not too deep. And then the final step is what we call post-intubation management. It's making sure that we get an x-ray, that we give the patient proper medications, that we secure the tube to the patient. And securing the tube so that it doesn't pull out. So let's go through each of these steps in more detail, each of these six steps. There's a saying in emergency medicine which is when you are prepared, it is no longer an emergency. So the three steps in preparation are body substance isolation, ensuring that you have the essential equipment, and a saying, soap me, which allows you to remember all of the things you want to collect before you perform intubation. So the first step in, in preparation is body substance isolation. When you're performing intubation, you can come in contact with the patient's body fluids. So it's very important to cover your face and eyes to make sure that you don't come in contact with these, this blood or body fluids. Number two is 
The next step is to gather all of the equipment that you need to perform intubation. And this is a list of all of the things that you will need every time you do an intubation. So I'll go through the list. You need gloves, eye protection, a suction device, a suction catheter, an endotracheal tube with a stylet, a 10 milliliter syringe, a stethoscope to listen for breath sounds, a bag mask device, a towel, oropharyngeal airways and nasopharyngeal airways, a laryngoscope handle, a ling laryngoscope blade, tape for the endotracheal tube, a pulse oximeter, and if you have it, an end-tidal CO2 detection device. But chẳng xăm vẽ tiếng ồn nó miền đôi chi sầm đáy, vạn ta cà phê phết, bật đập bom sẽ song ăn thịt bé chìm mùi nương đại snow bảo vía, serang đập millilit stethoscope. អំបុបែកជាមួយនឹងអុកស៊ីហ្សែនកន្សែងពោះគោមានសង់អូពីអេនិងអិនពីអេដងឡារាំងស្កូកបឡារាំងកូស្កូបបងស្អិតប្រដ
uh, centimeter markings on it to allow you to know how deep you have placed it within the patient. Bạn nấu con ong nấu lơ song ăn thịt bê này đã cứ miên tôm hôm đã cái đã chia cắt chia centimeter đảm bay ở dương mơ đảm bay ở nghi sốt đang thay chìm râu nát đại dương trở đại. The tube diameter or the width varies from very small 2.5 millimeters all the way to very large or 9 millimeters. Ba chăng tôm hôm với chìm miết rồi ba viết cứ cái pra pi cho pram millimeter and the length of the tube varies from 12 centimeters all the way to 32 centimeters. Some important numbers to remember the average size endotracheal tube you would use in an adult male is 7.5 to 8 millimeters. In the average adult female, it is 7 to 7.5 millimeters. And in children, it's very important that the, this, the endotracheal tube size is based typically on the patient's, the child's size and their age. So the, there are approaches to try and estimate the size required for a child, such as the formula age, or excuse me, yes, age or four plus age over four. Ba chăng ở rùa môn nó cứ buồn bộ nâng ở dụ chạy ở buồn. So for example, in a four-year-old child, four plus four divided by four equals five. So the typical tube size would be a five-millimeter tube in a child who's four years old. Ba chăng ở chăm pu ở some other approaches are to check the tube that would fit within the nostril of the, ch of the child, and that is an estimate of the proper size for what would go within the trachea or within the vocal cords. Or also in children, you can estimate the endotracheal tube size using the diameter of the child's little finger. These are all ways of estimating the proper endotracheal tube size, but it can be it can be. Uh, smaller or larger in any person, so it's always important to have the different sizes available, and possibly one size larger and smaller when you're going to intubate somebody. But young thằng anh ấy cứ chia vị thi vua nâng đảm bài đăng tổng hôm rồi bảo ý thi nó phải để dựng đạn nhẹ chừng người còn tai mũi tiết dựng ai chơi rồi bị tui lấy tui chừng năng mình tách rồi còn lấy thông chừng năng tách. Uh, within the endotracheal tube is something called a stylet. And the stylet is allows the tube to have some rigidity and allows you to form shapes with the tube. With the styled in place, you can form a shape for the tube and it will retain that shape. 
it's very important that the stylet does not extend beyond the end of the tube or you can injure the patient. Then the next device that we need to get is something called the laryngoscope. There are two parts to the laryngoscope. There is the handle which contains the power and the blade which contains the light. And we'll go over how you put the laryngoscope handle and blade together and which sizes you would use and in which patients. As I mentioned, there, the laryngoscope blade attaches to the handle, and there are two types of blade. There is the straight blade, or Miller blade, and there is the curved blade, or Macintosh blade. The straight blade is typically used in very young children and it directly lifts up the epiglottis. The curved blade is inserted into the vollecula, the space between the base of the tongue and the epiglottis, and it indirectly lifts up the epiglottis. Again, just like there are different endotracheal tube size, there are also different blade sizes depending on the age and size of the person you're intubating. Typically in children, you're going to use a 0, 1, or 2 sized blade, and in adults, a three or four sized blade. As I mentioned, one of the ways to remember all of the equipment and things you need to have ready when you intubate is the saying, Soap me. The S stands for suction. suction. The O stands for oxygen. The A stands for airway equipment. But A airway equipment. The P stands for pharmacy for uh, the medications you might give to the patient. But stand and the me stands for monitoring equipment. monitoring equipment. So let's go through soap me step by step. Again, S for suction. So you want to make sure that you have adequate suction available at the patient's bedside. And a suction catheter. 
bạn chẳng ở dương nâng vị phía mà đo mùi mà đo mùi nâng tờ lơ bị sốp nâng cư thì mùi cư tờ lơ S đã dương này dây ổng bị sạc sân sạc sân cư bàn này tha cư dương thua mất ở trâu miên mà xin sạc sân đã đầm nà ca lõ hay nâng ở sông rồi bỏ sạc sân You want to have oxygen available in the form of a face mask and also you want to have obviously a bag mask ventilation device Ba đã chấm pu oxygen, dương tria mà miên đôi chi mass oxygen, rồi có mà đại miên thang rồi bao oxygen. You want to make sure that your airway equipment is available and it's working. Ba một tiếng nó xong, bẹp lâu chờ, cứ dương trâu ở miên hay việt đầm nà cả ban là o. So again, you're going to check the laryngoscope light to make sure that it works. You're going to check the endotracheal tube cuff to make sure that it's not leaking. And then finally, you're going to insert the stylet into the endotracheal tube and make sure that it does not extend or protrude beyond the end of the endotracheal tube. Bạn chẳng đảm bây riêng trong xong rẻ nâng cư dương trâu bình nất mơ phương là răng gô scốp. Trút bình nất mơ cần lại bẩm bao ngờ bọ tự dô nút rai miên lệch chól. Hay nâng đại snow rồi bảo ít thì trở vào cơ thể mình liền tránh cáo. You want to gather any medications that you may need to give to the patient, and you want to establish an IV. Bạn chẳng ở dương trở riệp chậm ở thằng nam nâng xong rồi nâng thằng nam môi chìm luôn đấy, đôi chỉ cà chạ tam sờ say. And if it's available, it's advisable to put a patient on a cardiac monitor and to assign someone to watch that monitor during the procedure. Bà sân chìm biến nó cứ dừng chạp cạch dạng monitor hay dừng rộng nẹ nà mà nét đàm bây ai tạm đàn nâng chui nó đàm bây mơ là cạch dạng monitor nó. So that is step one in great detail. That is preparation. Bà nít chư chìa ca đi theo rồi bà chùm hiên tìm mùi. The next step is pre-oxygenation. Ba chấm hiên mình tỏa đầu tiên nó cứ ca phát đạo oxygen chiếm môn. It's a crucial step in intubation and it's very important to fill the patient with as much oxygen as possible before you perform the procedure. Ba nở lơ chấm hiên nó cứ xâm khăn một phát cư dương ca phát đạo oxygen ở bàn trao ăn châu tập nông nẹ chờ ngươi ở bàn môn phê là dương đạ xong ăn thịt bề. If the patient is not breathing, then you're going to pre-oxygenate the patient with 100% oxygen attached to a bag mask ventilation device. Bạn chẳng ở bờ sân chi nẹ chừng ngư mình toàn nẹ chừng ngư nó mình đọt thằng hai em té cứ dương trâu thôi mất sập sờn ở bàn ở bàn nẹ chừng ngư lang oxygen saturation rồi hốt đau mùi rồi sẵn. If the patient is breathing, then you're going to put them on 100% oxygen and let them breathe that oxygen in. Ba bàn tay bàn đẹp chừng ngư nó đọt thằng hai âm vĩnh coi dương thua dạng ná ao oxygen được nong khua nó rồi hốt đau mùi rồi đấy hay ở quạt bàn bớt sốp ốc hay ăn ở nhà ở quạt đọt thằng hai mày bàn là o sẵn đảm bài bớt sốp oxygen bàn là o. The reason this is so important is while you're performing the intubation, the patient may not be breathing. So you want to fill them as much with as much oxygen as possible before the procedure, so they don't drop their oxygen saturation during the procedure. Bà cô đau đại dương thưa đối chiến này cứ nó phê đại dương đã xong ăn thịt bê tao nè chừng ngư à ọt đỏ tầng hà ấm không phê nút chẳng cá bắt đầu oxygen ở ban môn ở ban chia ra nó cứ ăn ở nhát đầm bay cầm ao thì lại oxygen một lần phê. Step number three is to Provide the proper position for the patient to allow endotracheal intubation. Ba chum hiên tí bay cư ca đã sàn phiếp nẹ chừng ngữ dương đã sàn phiếp nẹ chừng ngữ ở bàn trầm trâu lõ. And there are three steps to positioning the patient. The first is set the height of the bed where it's comfortable for you. Chẳng ở miên chum hiên bay khăn ông ca đã sàn phiếp nẹ chừng ngữ ở lõ nó cứ tí mũi cư dương lây đầm rau còn buộc kẻ. You're going to position the patient's head. Tòa mó cư dương đã sàn phiếp khó bá lõ. And then apply cricoid pressure. Hai mũi tiết cư dương ai chẳng cắt tờ lơ chẳng chay rồi bọc bằng bông có. 
when we're positioning the head, we're essentially trying to align three important axes. Bạn ở phía đại dương đã thay nó phía của bạn, cứ tự đáo cứ dương đã làm bài ở vừa rốt nó là ạ bấy. And I'll show you a diagram in just a moment that shows you these different axes and how we position the patient's head to allow us the best chance of seeing the patient's vocal cords. Bạn chẳng ở quán nâng mà hai anh bị giá cram để đã nở lỡ ạ tiền bấy nó nâng đảm bấy ở khơi nhờ bị vô khó khó. And the goal of, a lot of positioning the patient's head is to try and get them into the sniffing position or the position you would assume if you were sniffing or smelling a rose. But the two that some can the young that stand up here, no good picture, no good young proud stand up here, proud sniffing, the stand up here, no good young that too much. And that is you're flexed at your lower spine, lower cervical spine, and extended at your upper cervical spine. And so let's look at these images. The first image shows the three different axes. There's the oral axes, the pharyngeal axes, and the laryngeal axes. Bạn chẳng ở dương đang ai khơi nhờ nâu ạ xí thẳng bấy miền ổ rô ạ xí phá răng hay nâng la răng ạ xí. And if we look at this picture, we can see that it's impossible to see along the arrow and make your eyes see around this curve. Chẳng bà dương mơ nở lơ rụp mùi ní. Khơi thà bẩn tuột đại việt bọc châu này cứ việt nâng mình ai mơ khơi nhờ tùm rung lâu cho bàn lọ thế. The patient's vocal cords are right here and so we need to be able to look with our eye into the patient's mouth and see the vocal cords right here where the arrow is pointing. Bạn chẳng ở vocal cords nâu cả lại ní. Chẳng bà dương mơ bì lơ máu cư dương đảm bày rộng mơ vô khó khọt bà thân dương nơi cả lại nâng chẳng cư dương mạnh ảnh mơ khởi bàn thế. So the first step in an adult is to place a towel underneath their head. This aligns the pharyngeal and laryngeal axes. Bà chẳng chẳng bù hờ mà nụ bánh vây nâng cư dương trù hợp cảnh xài nâu trọng có đảm bày ai riêng ai bòm bông cho riêng phân ngơi bằng tạch. And then the next step is again to get the patient into the sniffing position, flexed at the lower neck, extended at the upper neck, and that aligns all three axes, as you can see in the image. Bạn chẳng ở bật tốt một tiết nâng cư dương thư mách người khá ba lược chẳng ca láng đại dương bà bị sniffing position mạnh nâng đảm bây ở khá ba người láng hay hạp bằng bông khá cho bàn lọ. So as you can see in an older in an adult or an older child placing a towel roll underneath the patient's head helps you get into that sniffing position. Ba đai mu tiếc đó chấm pua cụ ma riêng thom mặn tạch nó có dương đạ sdieng nâng mu nu pành vây đá cứ dương trọp ba chẳng hay dương lược cọ cọ láng. Infants have a large occiput. Ba đai chấm ngờ chấm pua so that large occiput tends to make their neck flex. So to get infants into the sniffing position, instead of putting the towel behind their head, we put the towel behind their back. Bạn chẳng ở trong phố tìa rụa tàu nhắn cứ khó bì mà nụ bình vấy, mà nụ bình vấy cứ dương đạn nơi lưu các bạn bàn tay trong phố mà nụ tàu vẫn cứ dương trò hợp nơi nâng cả lấy xe mà. In older patients we have to be careful. Trong phố nẹ chẳng ngư vây chẳng nà dương trâu prong rồi dạch một tách. Many older patients have arthritis of their spine. But a pit chana ne chun vay jim na. Bab ni ku kuat min chung ngu no le chung kong ko. Their necks can be stiff and not move very much. 
So it may be very difficult to place them in the sniffing position. So it's very important in older patients not to force them into the sniffing position because you can harm them. So we try to get as close as possible to the sniffing position again without forcing the patient into that position. And then the third step in positioning is applying something called cricoid pressure or selic maneuver, the selic maneuver. And essentially what we do is apply about 10 pounds of force to the cricoid cartilage where the arrow is. And what you can see is that compresses the esophagus, which is pink right here. And in compressing the esophagus, it prevents passive regurgitation or the flow of the contents of the stomach into the pharynx. Let's watch a brief video on this. So firm pressure is applied to the cricoid cartilage. And as you can see, it compresses the esophagus between the cricoid cartilage and the spine. And that prevents the contents of the stomach from getting into the pharynx and prevents the patient from aspirating those contents. As I mentioned, elderly patients, you have to be careful before manipulating their spine. Same is true for trauma patients, especially patients with injuries above their clavicles. Look again at this spine, and you can see that it, even though there's an injury to the second cervical vertebra, it's properly aligned, it's straight. But you can see if we were to extend the patient's neck in an attempt to intubate them, that we could cause an injury. So as you can see, extension of the neck in this patient can lead to movement of the bones and possibly a spinal cord injury. So in such patients, what we typically do is ask for a third person to assist us, and their job is to hold the head in the neutral position. So as you can see in this image, there are three different people. 
one person is performing the intubation, one person is giving cricoid pressure, and one person is holding the head in the neutral position. But do you know the little group here? Ni strap, ku young men net by net that you can hear, ku net ti moi, ku net bark yok bark a plow shawl, net ti pig, ku yok dai top cabal, come out your comrade, nung net ti bay, chin net a sunk cut the lush and cry coy. Let's take a ten minute break. And then we'll come back and finish the rest of the lecture. We're more than halfway done. We'll actually go over how you perform the procedure, and I'll show you some video of that. So let's be here in exactly 10 minutes. Thank you.